Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of IDK Sports Podcast, your premier podcast talking sports yeah. with the average guy. My name is Anthony. This is my man Kenny. We back. And we back. Wait a minute, man. Wait a minute, man. We back. Wake it up. Back, man. From the live. It's been a minute. It's been a minute, man. You know, like, 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 two weeks, three weeks. Been a while, man. Been a while, man. Been a while. But we are back. We are. We are back in in effect here. Yes, indeed. Right now, um, you know, catch us every Monday yes, on YouTube, five PM, and anywhere you get your podcast at. We also on Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, and all podcast platforms. Yes, and like I said, don't forget to follow us at IDK Sports Pod Twenty Three to get any updates that we might have going on. Um. And, any videos, anything, man. You know what I'm saying? We here. Anything, man. Just hit, the, just, you know what I'm hit the follow button, hit the like button, share button, yeah. you know, so you can tap in with us, you know. Uh, just a little recap, you know, if you didn't miss it, you can go back. We had, did have a live episode um, regarding the women's college basketball. Yeah, did want to, uh, we said it before during the live, we said it afterwards, but want to say it again. Much, much, much appreciation to everybody that tuned in, showed love. It, it was uh, quite a benchmark for both of us uh, over here at IDK. Much love to you guys, and we definitely gonna spin that back again. All right, it was it was too much fun, too much fun, like too much fun kicking it with you guys. Fun here uh, at, at the show, so definitely appreciate y'all. We'll spin that back for sure. Yeah, definitely got to that again. That was a that was a great time. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? Getting interact with the with people ask mm-hmm. questions, get some jokes off, you know, watch the game, you know, and just, you know, see real time reactions and know saying what's going on and to get some, you know what I'm saying, get some pod talking points yeah. on too, right? Um, so past that has been a minute, you know what I'm saying? Everybody need a break, you know. Break. <laughs> so working men, you know family saying? men. Everybody you know? had to take a little break, so a couple yeah. things that happened. Um, since we left. Uh you want to start UConn up? won the men's master championship. Surprise. Right. Like, nobody was surprised. <laughs> surprise dominated. There. Dominated. Dominated. Yeah. Um, what else happened? South Carolina finished the undefeated season. I'm to say. That shot the big uh, dog. Shout out to Don Staley in their first undefeated season. Yep. Uh, finished that out against um, Iowa. Yeah, close um, that thing. What else? A lot of things happened. UFL started. Nobody yeah. cares. Mm-hmm. We don't get into all that. You know what I'm <laughs> uh, you know, baseball, baseball, baseball did start. Baseball's baseball. back. Baseball, back. Baseball is one of those sports, though, and I play. Mm-hmm. Like, love baseball. Yeah, go you know for it. Yeah, this is your house. <laughs> it's still, even for somebody that played it, baseball is an at the park type thing. Okay. It's hard to watch baseball. Talk, on, talk about it. Talk about it. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's hard. It's hard. But at the park, with the atmosphere, like, baseball is still. That sport that you have to go to to really enjoy, mm. I think, to the fullest. Football has gotten really good on TV to the point where I rather watch football TV. Boxing, I'm starting to lean really toward I rather watch boxing on TV, man, because even tickets cost a lot. I'm about to say, bro, they charge on lit, but it's a it's a luxury item at this point. They go to a boxing event, you know, they don't they only do so many a year, you know, yeah. especially. I mean, we're not counting like, of course, the amateur tickets. Though they might have your your favorite amateur might go two three times a year, yeah. that they, you know almost four. If we being honest, for those that's really out there in the gym like that, but yeah. uh, those boxers are hard, <laughs> a hard sport to keep up with in general. Yeah. But baseball, I'll say this: uh, what was it two <laughs> years ago? <laughs> Bless you, my good brother. Uh, almost two years ago, I went out to go see the Padres. It was uh, a Padres and Dodgers game. I it was it was caught by my uh, by my company at the time, and I was like, sure, my first major league baseball game, why not? I'm in San Diego, you know, win in Rome, do as the Romans do. Yeah. So, as you said, in the park, in the park is good. In the park, I'm locked in, and that's all levels too. It's but, not just like okay, um, major leagues like like the tied games. I know we had yeah. a minor league team. In my hometown too, like baseball, just an at the park experience. Even on like the younger youth level, 
it's not it's not meant for yeah bro it's because bro i'm telling you it is skip city when i'm at the crib and i'm watching and it's like I yeah can't baseball's off. i can't remember <laughs> it is skip played city. my whole life but i still can't watch the whole game but you know come like you know pennant time playoff time stuff like that hey you might have my attention for a couple of for a couple of innings. Of course, it's sports, so we keep we keep in tune with it from a distance. But you know, like I, I sit the, the highlights. If you want to tell me a highlight, catch me on the playoffs. It's sports center. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look at the highlights. No disrespect to any real baseball fans that go watch it, but all the baseball fans that I know go to live in towns and where they go to the games. Yeah, they go to the Philly, the Philly over the Philly games. Right. The DC people were like the Irish games. Games. Yeah. It's like hockey. It's a hockey is an amazing time at, but, at the arena. Uh, yeah. Well, again, I have a story to, to share. <laughs> the the year that the Caps won up there in DC, yeah. the city was jumping. I mean, yeah. You know, I was, you it's know, like what I'm saying when the Carolina Hurricanes won. This <laughs> <laughs> bro lit. <laughs> <laughs> the world was lit. I, mean, you know what I'm I was there in Foggy Bottom when uh when they brought the uh, the parade through uh Northeast DC. And you know, folks was coming out they, you know, coming out their job, cheering them on. The city was jumping, you know what I'm saying? So uh, but I heard hockey games in person. Personal it hockey. is like that. It is it's like, like that. that. So that's definitely on the to-do list, so, bucket list item. Cause I'm trying to go on there and slap glass with it. <laughs> throw, throw beer on the folks in the penalty box. That's my type of that's my type of entertainment. But um you know that happened, so baseball happened, and I want before we get too deep, dive deep into stuff. What else happened while we were going? Um, I know the draft, WBA draft happened. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk about jump that. that. We're gonna jump into that. I'm gonna get the stuff like the surface stuff out the way. Anything hmm? else in sports? It's been most of the talk anyway. I mean, most of most of sports kind of geared toward like you know heading to the draft, so they yeah. get in the big room. Yeah. Draft. So, you know, hop right into it. Let's you know do it. Saying? The WNBA draft um, was the 15th. Yeah. If you're watching it now on YouTube, that was last Monday. Yes, indeed. All right. So, last Monday, um, had the draft. No surprise, Kevin Clark went number one. Um, there was no surprise that Cameron Brink went number two. I hope I said her name right. Any Cameron? I know a lot of things Brink. I can't think of a first name. Um, the girl from Stanford. Yeah. She went number two to the Sparks. Uh, Camilla went number three. Three, yeah. They thought she was going to go later. They thought she was going to go six. Wow. Or fifth or six. Um, but Camilla went three. And then they followed up. Uh, my girl from Tennessee, I can't think of her name. Something Jackson? I can't think of her name. But she went, the girl from Tennessee, baller, Trey Bucket. She went to the Sparks with Brink, and then Chicago Sky double up and got Angel yes, there, Reese. on the block. Uh, spun the block, yep. Yeah, spun the block, got Angel Reese. Um, it was a good night, man. That was like the first time I watched the draft and knew more than just a couple other players. players yeah. Shout out to Angel, not Angel Reese. Some of y'all don't know this, but Angel, I can't remember her last name. What's her name? Is Jackson or something like that. Jackson State, she got drafted in the second or third round by the Las Vegas Aces. Sorry. So an HBCU player did get drafted this year. She's like six foot five or something like that. Um, a good player from what I've seen, but she got drafted. So shout out to my HBCUs. Definitely. Yeah. That's a big deal, you know. And especially like that shows you how far the women's game has come. Like talent is the talent is very spread out from when we started watching it, you know, it was more just Couple of teams had stars, and everybody yeah. else just was like, you know, falling yeah. in the play. I'm surprised you didn't mention your girl, Who? your girl, uh, Elisa Peely. You know, she went to Utah, yeah, she went to um, she went to Minnesota, mm hmm, yeah, yeah, I've been talking about it. Let's talk about Peely, yeah, she's a bucket, she's a bucket, yeah, man, I'm, that's, that's a, I'm a fan. Go ahead, shout your girl up, yeah, yeah. Peely with uh, she's a bucket, you said Minnesota, right? She went to Minnesota, yeah, she's she straight drafted. Bucket. But um no, I like I like um I like the picks of Cardoza and Reese, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got a little formidable uh front court there. Mm -hmm. So um you know, we'll see what they can do. Let's bring some bring some uh definitely, definitely gonna have some talk in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? I heard I seen the Twitter talk of 
the Bayou Barbie, formerly the Bayou Barbie. She was talking about coming up with a new nickname now that she went to Chicago. I saw some folks trying to call her Little Reese. I don't think that's the, the smartest decision uh, for those. If you know, you know. I don't think, that, I don't, I don't think that's the wise decision uh, for, for Angel Reese to, to take that, that moniker. But nonetheless, uh, shout out to the girls um, doing their thing, taking their next step in their career. Um, we got a few ways we can take this. Right now, um, of course, some folks are just like, yeah, but what about the salary? What about the brand deal? What about the star power coming to the league? So I'm I'm willing to have all debates today. Today we got time. Okay. Today we got time. Okay. You ready? <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't do it. <laughs> Whoa, ho, ho. <laughs> Every time we start talking about it. <laughs> but no, nah, it's so real. Oh, man, I'm just playing. It's so real. Nah, it's a real conversation to be had. First of all, um, before we get anything, there's a lot of new people here. To the WNBA, yeah. Um, that some of the numbers just don't sound right to them from what the men make. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, and you're not wrong. <laughs> um, but it is, even though the stars are coming. That's why we've been saying that the time to market is time to get <clears> stars <throat> because now it's time for the league to be able to market better or market um these players so you get better ad money better tv deals better all kind of stuff so now them salaries can jump up from yeah. four years three hundred thousand and maybe yeah. four year bill you know what i'm saying something bigger so ain't not for nothing right we don't want to just sneeze at you know you know me and my boy here we both hard working <laughs> hard working men you know what i'm saying it, we get it. That, that 76 your first year and, and you making all that like you hooping <laughs> but i know some grown men over in the ufl they only make 40 50 thousand a year but say <laughs> so hey it, it's it's there's something to be talked about but nonetheless that that was actually a, a bad analogy or a bad comparison Comparing the minor league to a professional team, <laughs> but we're we gonna, gonna keep rolling. You are part but, of the problem, but, so. nonetheless, but nonetheless, but getting back to my main point is that a lot of these girls gotta go out and outsource their money. You know, just making money outside the WWE. You know what I'm saying? So they gotta go overseas. Even your star players, um, uh, Audra Wilson. You know, she she getting endorsements from everywhere. I think she got. I think she was like the first. A WNBA player to get a uh, an endorsement from Ruffles, you know, you got to make that money up on the back end. But that's just you know a star player getting those endorsements. That ain't you know league wide. So, um, with all that being said, there's still work to be done. And we talked about it, you know, leading up to the draft. You know, actually heading into I want to say heading into the into, uh, the women's tournament. Yeah. As far as how much talent, how many eyes is on the league now that. Hey, this is going to become a premier item. You know, this is a premier product, yeah. and these girls should be paid as such. You know, so um, it, it would really turn the corner as far as the crop that's coming in. As you say, hey, let's break that move now so we can get ahead of it. Yeah, you know, but it's a um, but, it's like a real it's up to the, it's up to the WNBA now to make sure the eyes stay. Yeah, the eyes came. Now it's time to make sure the eyes stay. I think Retention. as much as you know, you know me. I'm like, as far as Caitlin Carter being like the goal of the best player, it's not my lane at all. Mm. But I do think she okay. is going to be the reason why the WNBA gets to move forward. Mm. She has a lot of fans. I mean, say what you want to say, she got a lot of fans. Right. Um, but I don't think we need to. Also, they had to make sure they push other stars on top of that. Right. And you talked about um, Asia Wilson. Um, you know, she should be just as pushed as the current star, just as much as Caitlin Clark is getting pushed to another demographic of fans. 
-hmm. So another uh, a demographic of fans that might rock with Asia Wilson or rock with an Andrew Reese so rock with a couple of Cardosa yeah. or rock with a, uh, a couple of people, you know what I'm saying? Like um, my girl that went to Minnesota. Oh, um, Miss Peely? Yeah, like yeah. she's Native American. Like we need to, we need to build a coalition of a bunch of stars with the eyes that Caitlyn brought, yeah. right? So Caitlyn brought the eyes, now it's time to see other stars. Magic Johnson, Larry Bird bought eyes, but then people say, oh, I like Detroit. Oh, yeah. I like these um, Julius Irvin. I like yeah. this. I like that. Yeah. Bring the, you got to train. Now you got to take some eyes to other places so it helps the whole league. There you go. Um, that's really what needs to happen, you know. Um, now, as far as the game, I think that – the Jackson girl that went to the Sparks is probably going to be the best player. Rookie off the valley. She's pro ready. And she's a bucket mm -hmm. all day long. Um, I think the next best player is probably going to be Camilla. It's because of her size. Off the rip. This was off her yeah. size. All right. Um, I think she might. I Like, like you said, offside, you can't, you know, something you just can't teach. Yeah, and I think she can score better. That's why they got Angel. And then they got Angel. Well, let me finish. Third yeah. one, I think Caitlin is going to be good and could possibly win Rookie of the Year because of the height. I think Caitlin is going to average like 18, 19, and 10 assists. I think she's a better passer than people give the credit for. For sure. And then you're talking about they already got um, one of the women, I can't think of her name, and Kelsey Mitchell. She's like fourth all time in, in, um, in uh, NCAA scoring when she left, walking Bucky. And you add that with a Leah Boston down low. Yep. Now you can't double team. Caitlin and Caitlin can, you know what I'm saying, work the ball down to Leah, Leah get double team, pass it back out to Caitlin. I think Caitlin's going to average a lot of so I think she's going to show you that she's way more of a playmaker, yeah. too, than just a score. I think that's going to really show. And I think um, Chicago did a good job. They got Teresa Witherspoon as their coach. They got guards already. So then you get Camilla, who I think want Camilla to score. And then Camilla's going to average a good bit of points. And then you bring in Angel, who's a dynamic. Intensity rebound tone finger. setter, yeah. Tone setter. I think Angel's going to average double digit rebounds. I don't know if her scoring is going to be there yet. Mm. So I haven't seen it. Yeah, I um, I, I actually I'm gonna go to a little bit the other way. I think they still. I think she's still going to be a force. Maybe not year one, but definitely going like year three, year four. Uh, Cardoza, I just I see there's gonna be some issue with her getting back down the court. Like you know, defensively when she in the paint, she's gonna be a force. But when it comes to like running the floor and getting back on, oh, you know, I'm saying there was times there were just lapses and and where she needed to be, uh, lapses and like you know eyes on the ball, eyes on the fender. Uh, you know, some of that some things is gonna be challenged. Which this is like. This is like, so what? They all, you know, no matter what sport you win, rookies going to struggle. Rookies going to have, you know, some hurdles to get over. Nobody comes into the league a finished product. Uh, you know, even shifting that over to, to Caitlin, I think she's going to be challenged a lot on the defensive side of the ball. You know, it's, you know, when you was in Iowa, putting up 30, 40, you know, putting up the numbers you did was cool, you know, amongst, you know, 18, 19, 20-year-old women, but, you know, you're coming into a league of, you know, grown women professionals that's not only going to take it to you, take it to you to, ma to the max on O and then come up and play and put the straps on you on D. So those those open shots, those picking, picking, <laughs> those picking shot, those picking yeah, shoot joints, straps. put the straps on you, that is wild. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, come on. This is a production. You don't want to run off. But, but, help you out, brother. <laughs> but those, uh, those pick and pops that you were able to get off uh, in Iowa may not always be there. And I, think the, I think the three is going to be there, though. Well, Kelsey listen, Mitchell I say, Kelsey Mitchell ain't cast. no joke. Yeah. And Aaliyah, we know Aaliyah ain't no joke. You go, she going to demand something. Right. I think, I think she's going to have a lot more one-on-ones. She could average a lot of points. In the league, just because the one on one, I think the thing about the thing about Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark get frustrated real easy. That's what we talk about Angel Reese, but Caitlin can get frustrated really yeah. easy. Okay, so like yeah, Luca, about to say, so we don't have to look back that far, right? So in the championship game, right? Uh -huh. All right, so 
Uh, that last, I think she said they think she went like the last That's five minutes, point. last five minutes of that game, or I want to say four to five minutes. Let's just mm -hmm. give it a range. Four to five minutes, she couldn't get a shot. You know, she was just, you know, forcing her game, just mm -hmm. trying to make something happen. You know, this is for all the marbles. She's just trying to force it. Mm -hmm. The angel was just there like, nah, not happening. You know, I'm, I'm tasked Raven. for the, Raven, thank you, thank you. Raven was there to, uh, for the rest of the game, just like, nah, not happening. I'm making life hard for you. So when uh, when the offense ain't clicking and we don't need you to be, uh, you know, when we're running screens for you or making you run through screens, then when you back on D, you know, for at least, you know, 20 seconds or whatever, you don't have that much legs to get back on O and find your shot. So, uh, like you said, she can go get real frustrated, and she wears that, that body language wears on her yeah so and it's gonna be that much tougher mm -hmm. you know so there was a chink in her armor that was revealed in that last championship game so i think a lot you like i was saying before it's gonna be that much tougher now that you got you know women that's been in the league and they seen you know a lot of game come and go mm -hmm. so not saying i'm not saying she's gonna be a fake that's what you know wow. she went no she can play she went number one overall for a reason she can ball, she can ball. but you know, uh, it's it, it will be on uh, it will be on the coach and not you know not throw her to the fire immediately. Yeah. But um, quick side note: we are Saturday. We record we record ahead of time. You know, there's two women coming taking this game. That's that's wild. That's what's up though. The commentate the NBA playoff game. You love to see it. That's what's up, man. Love to see it. I'm here for it, bro. Yeah. Here for all of it. Here for all of it. Oh, um, see it. But, you know what I'm saying? You got anything else you want to add, WNBA thing? Mm -hmm. I was going to tell everybody, season starts Tuesday, May 14th. I will be there. I will definitely be watching. <laughs> Four games are slated. I think, I know Indiana's playing. They had to move her. They had to move to a bigger stadium. They sold out the tickets so fast. Uh, but I'm only making 76000 yeah, That's hey, crazy. Hey, there we so go. She outsold her jersey and outsold yeah. all the, what the Cowboys sold last year or something. She, as I'm saying, we what well, one thing we're not gonna play with is her star power. Her, her, only, she, yeah, it's like she's uh, no matter okay, that's like no matter if you agree with why right. her star power is there, right? Not gonna go too deep into that, but if you agree why the star power is there, if you agree, it, whether you agree or disagree, she, she is gonna be the reason why the WNBA moves forward if it moves forward because. Whether you like it or not, you can't help. I mean, jersey sales turn into more revenue. Yeah. Her on TV. She's ah. SNL. Yeah. <laughs> she's on Saturday Night Live. Live. So, and, you know, she was a real one. She brought the Iowa squad with her. So, shouts out to her for that. Yeah, but, uh, you, I you think can't. She handles it well, too, though. I think she does handle it. Like, yeah. like, like, she gives me that, like, not saying she's the same player. So, don't get mad. But, you know how LeBron handled. Coming out of high school, kind of like he handles Maturity. it a little mature. I think she yeah. she acknowledges it, but she handles it pretty well. Yeah, like she's not like over cocky, over reserved. Like she's like, I'm available. You know what I'm saying? Right. And not nah, nah, I'll talk, but you know, it's not coming off as like, oh, I yeah. did everything. Right, right, you right. Know? Overly confident, but I mean, by all by all accounts, even if it was like. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the, the powers that be, you know, we like to see some type of bravado. So if that was the case, I wouldn't even knock her that way because she, she damn sure earned it. Yeah. But uh, I think, like you said, I think she handled it well. And, you know, I see a lot of the bickering, you know, back and forth. But nonetheless, let's just champion that, you know, there's a lot of eyes on the sport. And now and, it's time for me to take advantage. Exactly. So, um, let, so let's, let's get these girls right. One thing we got that I do want to say before we move on to the next topic um, is the shoe deal thing. Now, this has nothing to do with any player. Mm -hmm. This is all about the economics in America. Yeah. Caitlin Clark, absolutely. If you got all that star power, I mean, you'd be dumb not to sign it to a crazy deal yeah. and get a shoe. I mean, it's about making money. Mm -hmm. But we should also acknowledge that shoes make bigger stars too um i think asia should already had a shoe already i think my girl from um oh it's the dark skin girl she got she got like a 
nice she dress. Now she, she's got like some fashion brands. I think she should have a shoe on right now. I can't remember. I think of a name. It'll come back to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a couple of women in WNBA that have shoes more than do. I mean, right now it's only Sabrina and Brianna Stewart. Both deserve it. Especially Brianna. Brianna's a hooper. Brianna's a ball. Like, I'll never take away that Brianna. Behind Asians, probably, they're probably one of the two best in the league right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is what I talk about when the league has to maximize, the league has to also build up the squad. That's what David Stern was kind of good at, and nobody, people didn't give him credit for it until he passed away. Yeah. He built stars. He made sure stars were built up. Um, when he became, even before he became commissioner, doing the Larry Bird, yeah. thing, he made sure that Bird and Magic were built up as stars. Now, the people, the players have to do their part. Right. But with all that their part, he took care of LeBron when he got there. Yeah. He took care of Kobe when he got there. Like, People show, like, like it or not, I know it's the, they're like, oh, conference competition. People show us to see stars and stars with personality. Tim Duncan, one of my favorite players. He is a basketball star with no personality. Yeah, boy, watching paint dry. You know <laughs> um, Kevin Garnett had more personality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I do think Asia should be, there's some women in there that got personality that if you give them the spotlight, they will make some fans. And that's why I keep going back to the WNBA. You got to make the stars. Yeah, and even in the case like uh, with Asia, like she's with Nike, you know, so, so you know, a shoe will come. You know, I know a lot of people talking about like, why isn't it done now? But, you know, it will come. I mean, she's, you know, for Christ's sake, she's a best-selling author, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> like her, her socials do numbers. Her... And you know, her ventures do numbers. She has a portfolio that is, you know, well, well versed, very versatile. So um, it is going to come. But like, you know, like my boy was saying, it's, it's about placement, right? And finding the right placement. Uh, so we're not just coming up with any half big ideas. This is the time. If not, if not now, then definitely prior to now. Uh, the placement has to be in, it has to be there to, you know for these girls like for a good launching pad mm-hmm. you know if you know narratives storylines make sports you know and you have a prime one walking into the league this year yeah. you know and with the backing that everybody wants to see you know uh, a rookie debut hasn't been this you know polarizing since with what you think maybe I mean, just just across the yeah, I'm about to say uh, men or men or women. For Caitlin? I'm just saying like a rookie debut. For Caitlin? Yeah. Is it, this is big since I can remember since like a LeBron. Then, okay, so <laughs> let's let's treat it as such. Yeah, right? You know like I yeah. Yeah, so LeBron is probably the most anticipated one. You know, you know, and you, that's uh, a teenage LeBron walking into Cleveland. Ross, you know, Wimby. Wimby Wimby was anticipated too. Okay. Because that's that uh this summer camp that summer that summer camp up. was packed out of you and yeah. so say we can say Wimby. Okay. Wimby 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 is but, but even so even with Wimby who we can actually talk about him if you want to. We'll he, get to work in the yeah, basketball. Yeah, when, He's crazy, but um, you you have uh, a perfect time now where these you know these girls come into the league or the eyes is here. It's just the placement has to be befitting of the player. You know, uh, with all these eyes there now, there's gonna be a lot of people you know watching these games saying, "Hey, you know, what about her? What about her? I think she got some spunk. Think she got this. She, you know, so it's just gotta be." made available to him. As uh, my boy was talking about with David Stern, uh, that whole uh, storyline that surrounded Bird and Magic led to guys like Clyde, you know, getting yeah. they getting they run going. You know, so it, it, it won't just, a lot of the hoopla is made, being made about Caitlin, but there's going to be a lot of other uh, great, uh, great basketball players being stars behind this too. So let's not be short-sighted about this. This is definitely uh, uh, something that's gonna be built with a long runway. So let these girls cook, man. They 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 got the talent for damn sure. So uh, let's just get a team around them, and you know, and make sure that placement is 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 fitting a bit. Yeah, you know? that's what. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying. WNBA May 14th, four games, mm-hmm. opening day. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Watch it, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna be watching, man. Right then. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have this. I'm, I got about like five, five of it. I'm trying to like really see. I'm trying to see how Chicago work out. You know, I'm trying to see what the Ace is gonna look like coming back off what back to back. Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful too, though, because it's like I'm trying to see how the Liberty about. I'm trying to see how. Low key, Quads come trying to see how Seattle's like with Skyler and the group carry out there together. Like, it's, it's a beautiful to thing though because it's like we we were. I think a lot of fans are neo, especially now, are like neos to you know loving the sport or very young and you know yeah. falling in love with the sport. So you ain't got to be attached to a team just yet. So I know uh, a lot of people ain't maybe a lot don't have like a favorite team just yet. But at least you get to just in Minnesota and, my admire the game. <laughs> at least at, at this point you, you can just <laughs> <laughs> at least at this point you can just admire the game and just follow your favorite player until that time happens. So let's go Lynx. So let's do it, you know. Let's turn up. Let's go Lynx. I got Minnesota Lynx is one of my favorite teams. The Ace is my favorite team because the Ace is one of my favorite players. Who? Uh can't deny that. You know what I'm saying? Who else do I? That's about it. That's about it right now. Everybody's like, I can watch, but I'll watch it. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to see Minnesota. But I was rocking with Minnesota when Mike was there. Yeah. They yeah. were like three. That's a real one. Like three of them. Yeah. And I think. It's a small one with all that. That's real. And my relationship with basketball was never like, you know, attached to a single team. It was just, you know, follow the player. Follow the player. So. The basketball allows you to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One player can change so much. Like, it's hard to be like a LeBron fan in Cleveland and then not follow me to Miami. Yeah. Or back in Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Who you stuck with? Yeah, but, saying? I mean, I think Kyrie walked in like that same year, too, that he left. Is that right? I got that time on right? Or maybe like a yeah, year after. Like a year after. Yeah. They had him more weird than I was on the That team was trash. <laughs> yeah. 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 More weird than I was on the Black track. <laughs> Trash, oh man. May 12th, man. Watch the game. So another thing we're gonna talk about, man, in case you missed it, in case you didn't care. Nobody cares. Mm-hmm. UFL, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. <laughs> UFL, your schedule impressed. Oh god damn. <laughs> that your scheduling really Oh, boy, UFL pisses me off, bro. But we, okay, so let's be real. Let's be real. Pisses me off. Let's be real. So. Because, nah, let me get the head off. Okay, are you starting on it? You know what I'm saying? Be on the Correct. I don't care about you. You know what I'm saying? The UFL, man. Now let's go first. I'm going to off last. Oh, go ahead. May I? You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. I right. feel like mine will come off the tape. Yeah, no, nah, it will be. But let's get to it. So it's um the thing that we gotta we gotta really like keep in mind, and mind you, we talked about this off air too. Uh you gotta keep in mind is where else would they go? Where else would you start a season? I mean, at this time oh, God damn. at this time <laughs> they are very much uh a minor te- a minor league. Uh, a, it's worse than minor league. A feeder system at that point. So not the play. I don't want to talk about the play. I mean, I don't I mean. I, I'm not cutting you off. Yeah. I don't know cutting you off. Before I get my hate off, because people think I'm like you about to talk about the play. I'm not talking about that. I'm gonna make that clear. I, I'm not talking about the play neither. You said minor league and it's a feeder system. It's a feeder. So but you're not talking about the play. No. Okay. Cool. But I'll be on the same page. All right. I think the play is pretty decent. Yeah. No. Nah, but my <laughs> thing is. <laughs> My thing is, is that if, like, come on. if not, <laughs> but since you keep cutting me off, they're all Fox, they're all ESPN, you know, they're all FX1. So, so, you know what I'm saying? They got, um, they got room. If that pause, sorry. They got <laughs> broadcasting, they got broadcasting uh, is available to them. But my point is, okay. is that where else would you place them in a year? You know, because they, you still uh, got these athletes that still want to make it to the NFL. You know, they want to be able to join a team come summer. You know, so at that May or June, you know, juncture when they got, you know, voluntary OTAs and 
try to get pretty much get into an organization before camp starts. That's what I'm getting at. So you got to make they got to be available for that too. You know, so you need an abbreviated season. You need uh, a short runway because they're not playing that many games a year. The playoffs going to be short. It, it's pretty much putting uh, putting talent on tape. That's all this thing is built for. You know, at this point, and you got a um, uh, a profitable product. How profitable? Uh, I don't know. It's not profitable. But, uh, That's why they merged. Yeah, it's just <laughs> they uh, profitable about it. But they just merged uh, at the end of last year. They merged because both of them were losing money. Okay, but at least you put two brands together. Brand is a heavy word. T-Mobile, Sprint, they get it. Sometimes merchants keep people alive, uh, keep people with jobs. Stop. <laughs> you, you're not going, all right, so you're not going to get them started in February, right? You're not going to get them started in February. That's the end of football season, uh -huh. and you just getting over it like the NBA celebrity uh, All Star Weekend. Okay, not gonna start them there. Not gonna start them in March because that's college basketball. You're not tuning into that. They did start in March. Right? What I'm saying is, for you're gonna get like coronated. You're not gonna like run like mid season through March. That's your point, brother. You know what I'm saying? Convinced audience. Man, I, I, did. Did. I know why. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're not gonna start uh, June. Well, maybe like, let's say like. July, August, because that's too late for them to get them into an NFL organization. Oh. So you already got, like, what we talking, March, April, May, you know, three or four months, you know what I'm saying, for them to at least put something on tape. You know, and mind you, these are former NFL players. These ain't just straight-out college kids. These are uh, players, right, you know what I'm saying, some of them used to be, uh, used to be in the league, trying to get back. Uh didn't get picked up or went undrafted and still trying to buy for their dream. You know, the, like like Ann said, the, the play is good. The, the product that you see on the field is good. That's still quality football. Mm -hmm. You know, and you got former, you know, NFL, like, lead coaches in there, too. So the 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 guidance that's a, surrounded around the game is good and the play on the field is good. As far as the league itself, you got to be willing to sit back for the long haul. You got to give it a chance first. Now go. Done? I said my point. All right. So now that he finished pandering, <laughs> let's talk about the real. Okay. <laughs> the league had to merge because both leagues lost a ton of money. ton of money. First mistake, stop playing in NFL in these big button arenas. That you don't need. It looks bad. DC defenders look okay. They play in about a twenty-five thousand season plus. Old stadium, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Old arena. I was trying to play in where the Lions play, and nobody there. It looks bad on TV. It looks bad. Next thing, you gotta stop being the the, the, the same year. I don't think you can survive as a league being the same year viable option for a pro team. You can't. You're going to have to get guys that are willing to miss out this year mm. and play. you got to start later. you got to be ending right when preseason football is starting. Because mm. right now you're getting stepped on. You started your season during the women's tournament, the women's Final Four. No. Yes. The women's Final Four. The Final Four. On Elite Eight. Yeah. You started your tournament during the Elite Eight. Right? Nobody watched it. <laughs> now, here you are in your season, and the NBA playoffs started. It's a game one a day. It's actually a game one a day against the Memphis. Yeah, they got a full slate of games. Got a full slate of games. Who watched it? The full slate of NBA playoff games today. They going from 1 to 8 30. They gonna stop playing basketball at nights about eleven o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you wanna get some got, got games tomorrow. We wanna get some reruns on? Oh, they got games from one to nine o'clock tomorrow. You never see it. You never see games. So what are we doing? They're gonna lose money again because the viewership is even worse this year. They shifted the XFL model and did it later. And the USFL, no, they did they shifted the USFL model and did it later. 
the XFL did this earlier, so they did it early. This should have not started until May. And the guys need to be okay that they didn't make you ain't gonna be able to play this year in the NFL. And the chance of most of them going back to the NFL and really getting in and getting busy is slim to none. But hey, tell the audience, yeah, you got to tell me. You know what I'm saying? You know what it's like black. <laughs> the, uh, I'm just, I'm just, I, I don't like the way it rolled out. I don't like the rollout. <laughs> I, don't I, don't like like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like the rollout. Like the rollout to me seems, oh, we got to have a league. Oh, we messed up. We got to have a league. And now you got this league with no eyes on it. Ain't nobody even at the games. Like, even the XFL. Which one started later, the XFL or the USFL? Because the XFL had more crowd participation than the USFL, and it's like nobody at these games. You don't know, like the coordination of the XFL? Yeah. Like, that was, but they brought in, they brought in like a wrestling market, too. Like, it was like a crossover from like wrestling. And it to, failed. Yeah. The, the play, Mark the leagues were smart. Because having two leagues like that didn't work out. Quarterback play sucked in one league. Now you got a better league. Better players, I get it. The timing of it, because it is actually a decent product. Nobody's watching. Okay. Nobody's watching. Hold on, hold on, because I got you. I got you. Hear me out on this. Hear me out on this. Mm-hmm. If you think of the, if you think of the UFL as just that, like a like a minor league system. Right, mm-hmm. like look at the markets that they're that they putting their teams in: mm-hmm. St. Louis, uh, Arlington, Texas, D.C., Birmingham, Birmingham. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, if you just think about those local markets already, mm-hmm. you know, it's already in states that's probably you know that's dominated by other like pro teams, with the exception of Alabama. You know, what I'm saying you think about that, we're just doing grassroots, you know, grassroots marketing at this point. We we gotta get local buy it, and mind you, hold on, mind you. The St. Louis Battle Hawks, I believe is the team's name. Say their name. Yeah, exactly. Battle Hawks. I saw a team called the Showboats. I think it's like the Memphis Showboats. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> it's not. It's, the, the brand over there is not good. But either way, like um, like a team like the St. Louis Battle Hawks, they get good, they get good turnouts for, they, for their games. Because St. Louis is another team. And okay. Oh, okay. Right. All right. And like Birmingham, do good. Birmingham do good. You know they do. I think they got a team in San Antonio. I'm, I might be wrong with that. One. Yeah, they play Alamo though. Okay. So if you think of it in just that framework, they do all right. Now, when does the CFL start? When does their season start? I don't know when it's going. It runs from. It starts in June. Ends in October. So. So to your point, guys ain't trying to play. Everybody say so. To your point, that's what I'm saying. I'm giving you a little pushback because to your point, those CFL guys are foregoing that next league year and saying, "Hey, uh, I'm a ball here. I'm a ball here." And I'm so when I guess when the next uh, draft or you know when the league next league year start, I think you understand what I'm saying. When uh, when the next league year start, that's when they petition to join to join an uh, NFL organization. But all trying that. to fit everything into a small window, dog. Yeah, and too okay. much is going on. You got stepped on by opening day, stepped on by March Madness. Yeah, now you getting stepped on by ain't nobody watching these games today tomorrow. You went, you went fourth string on a professional on a professional platform. Hockey playoffs are starting. Yeah, again. It, it's still it's, a, it's, we lost money. You know it's, what watch. it's a working, it's a working concept though. Like I don't know how CFL has been in production for how long. The CFL is established itself as the second best behind the NFL. Okay, this league could be that if you get guys like the CFL mm-hmm. that's rated for gold, for go they mm-hmm. make, for go they hear. Mm-hmm. You probably can build it. It's, it's a market for football for sure between June. In October, June is like the dog days of baseball that nobody cares about. Right. It's like the only thing that's going to be on is like what the finals are in June. Yeah, in the finals. I mean, this year, the Olympics, Olympics this year. You know, that'd be a rough year this year regardless. Yeah. But any other year, like, it's that June to, it's June to training camp. Yeah, training camp. It's kind of like, ugh, ain't much on. They yeah. could feel that whole void. 
Man, okay, and now let's now say, I see the field games. Okay, so here's you, you just made a good point. So if you know even professional premier uh, league or sports such as baseball is having a hard time retaining viewership over the summer. What the hell you think <laughs> the UFL gonna do? Or the well, well, we, we just said that baseball is not a TV sport. Really. Yeah. Too much. And baseball play 162 games. June is not a big month in baseball because the players start getting bored a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of like, uh, excitement's kind of dying. Right, right. I done played the, if I'm the uh, Mets, I done played the Phillies. You play like eight, four game series against teams in your division. Right. That's 32 games with the same team. Now, only and this is going. This is probably gonna get somebody gonna get somebody in trouble. But if you really want to garner some like some interest in like the UFL, even the CFL, if you want to do that, you're gonna have to really live by that minor league system. You're gonna have to really live up to that minor league name and start poaching some of these high school players. Yeah, they, they, that's gonna get somebody. Wow. That's gonna get somebody hurt. <laughs> you gonna have to live, live up to it. Just, a, lot of guys. just the same way that basketball is like, hey, do you want to go to the league or you want to go play Euro? You know what I'm saying? I was a high school player. That's crazy. But <laughs> what I say? High school players is crazy. High school players is crazy. <laughs> we looking at NILs right now. It's not that crazy. The NIL is money, but as far as like body and maturity of the body, that's crazy. Now what I will say is it's not crazy to play with. It's not crazy that Luke was over there and, and over there um, playing with grown men at sixteen, though. Are we having a conversation right now? Are we talking about basketball? Or talking about football? Yeah, we talk. <laughs> we talking about professional sports. So you got a high school player, right? Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm talking about an eighteen year old kid. You're fine. I'm over entertaining right now. <laughs> I'm cutting it out. Right, <laughs> let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about a lot. Let's do it. A lot about a high school. What's the size? So he fine. All right, cool. <laughs> cool. All right. I know you said that compare basketball to football. Nah, answer my question. Yo, I'm talking about a now, developmental. Answer level. the question. <laughs> How, what's the size of an average high school? Not even average. I was about to say that fool probably came in six one two oh five six one two ten two twelve. You gonna put this man on the field with grown men? I'm talking about a developmental league. If we I get, get it, but in okay. part of that development, you put this young boy on the field with a six a Rokon Smith size or the Quinn size. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I get what you're saying because this is you probably put them on the field with somebody that got that went through a whole college tenure, went to the league, comes back, back, you know, he's coming back and playing the league. You know what I'm saying? Still a rocket spot because he's still trying to you know buy for his dream. So he didn't, you know, he didn't seen the rigors of the league and the, and the college. Now this man two twenty five lining up, lining up, lining him up. Hey, bro, they said they said Adrian Peterson. <laughs> Was, was the last one, was the, the one generation? Oh, I'm gonna get my point off. <laughs> they said the one cat that's like a man from Pop, 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 <laughs> Man, came to this earth is a broken They man. said Adrian Peterson was like the last uh, pro football player that was probably ready. Uh, Him and Jadavion are probably the last ones that's probably ready. Jadavion was ready, yeah. Probably Jadavion ready. was ready too. That's a fact. Yeah, uh, probably, uh, well, I mean, as far as uh, I'm not, not just counting physicality, but mentality, well, well, mentality, well, mentality as well. But you can get guys like the thing is, can can you convince that third string quarterback that hey, you sitting over here in the NFL, yeah, on the practice squad ain't gonna help you when I can get you in, you can play. Yeah. It's a rough sale. Mm -hmm. It's a very rough sale. But like that for going that league year to put film on there and to really ball against, I think the, XF, the USFL, or what is it, USFL, U U UFL, yeah. UFL, will get better time than Canada if they yeah. establish that model. I don't want to go to Canada. I got to go through customs. Right. I got to, you know what I'm saying, all that money. That money is American yeah. dollars. Citizenship and all that. Yeah, and all that stuff like that. So that's that's my whole thing with it. Um, I think it's not going to make it. I think it's going to fold. I, I think they're going to fold. Unless, unless they have a lot of money in the bank. Or somebody that's very, very patient. Because Ken, they lost. You know what XFL lost last year? 
They lost like five million or some shit or something like that. And the USFL have been losing money since they started. They've been breaking even, I think. But you don't start this. You don't start this business with it, or you don't get we merged into. Merge and we lose twenty five million. Shit. They didn't merge to the end of last year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Y'all, y'all was losing money. We merged this year. We, then we combined our losses and lose even more money. So we could all stay yeah, in business, good. and we all stay in business. I was saying, you hear what I said? <laughs> we merge. I was losing ten. You was losing ten. Yeah. We merge, lose twenty five together. Yeah. You the investor. Mergers happen all the time outside of the sports. Okay. You was losing 10. No, somebody, you the investor. Company A was losing 10. Company B was losing 10. They merged and become company C. Company C after one year loses 25. So not only did you lose 10, 10 together, you lost five more million on top of that 10. This is me pulling my ski mask down. <laughs> you I'm, you I'm running up to somebody's office. You're the investor. They come back to you like, yeah, we all move right down the cusp. Yeah, we need to re-up. Y'all came together and lost more money. We need to re-up for another five years. I'm like, the hell you will. <laughs> <laughs> the hell you That's will. what I'm saying. I don't know what. I know the Rock now that his investment was saying they're dedicated. But dedication is always good to the end of the, 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 the numbers. The numbers come back. The portfolio come back. <laughs> and you've been cutting a lot of checks. You didn't make a lot of dime. Not even right. like. Broke even or even lost, say it was like ten million dollars. Yeah, that means we ain't make nothing. Not all they not, they're not coming for the boom product though. I so if it. they scale, if they scale their league to not be a boom product, like we like by no stretch of the imagination do we think we're gonna be gathering around the TV every Saturday and Sunday in May and enough. June. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying you get enough. You can get enough. You can steal something, baby. You can get enough people. Right now, it's a game on right now. Yeah. What are we watching? We're watching this playoff game. <laughs> but <laughs> if you just keep like, hey, if we, at the, at the end of the day, right, all you got to do is show your investors this. Like, hey, look, mm-hmm. I promise you, uh, if I can promise you a five, a five to seven minute, a five to seven percent increase. If they lose and five, you keep going. Five million, you keep going. That's what I'm if saying. You lose double digit million, it's hard to keep it somebody. But if you to keep going, lose a double digit. That's what I'm saying. All you're looking for is incremental increase, yeah. right? If so if I show, if I can show two to seven percent increase yeah. in markets, uh, markets A, B, and C. I think we just talked about what we just talked about: St. Louis, Birmingham. I think the markets that they got are pretty good. Right. I think I think happens in Alabama. I think happens two teams in Texas. Texas love football. Right. I do get why they didn't keep Seattle because of the travel. But I think having that Seattle team would have been great. Right. But the travel was too much. They kind of kept it all like right here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I get where they at. They should. Like you said the local presence needs to be heavy. Right. You know, DC been bumping theirs up real heavy. Yeah. Um, uh, but we do know that tennis don't make the money all the time. Yeah, they ain't count on the door, but and, but in the space they're in now, that has to, that has to be where you look for your wins at. They got to change where they start. They got they got to do that. We, we can't be the one that's gonna get you in this year. Mm-hmm. We might get you in next year. Get you to a training camp and fight next year. Or get you on the list if it's gonna get hurt. None type vibe because I, starting I, right now. It's, it's crushing you. Yeah, but I, I'm with you in the, in the thinking of you got to be able to forgrow the NFL season if you're gonna sign up. Because this, this requires this requires a commitment not only because you don't look at you wouldn't ask you're not asking the coaches to take the same short term commitment like thinking like yeah I'm gonna just coach these couple of months thinking that I'm about to join a uh, an organization in yeah. uh, by the summer because that's not when the hiring is done. If the coaches and the front office and the leadership is there, is all signing up saying, "Oh, this is my job. No, this is my job to lead this team." But the players are the only one that's like, "I'm looking for my my exit my exit plan, my exit strategy." Yeah. It ain't gonna work. So everybody draft. everybody got to be able to make a full term commitment. I think you draft like FCS guys levels. Yeah, guy, Division two guys, guys you can develop. Bingo. That's going to be around. Maybe you can be around a couple years, maybe make stars out of them. Not stars, but make household names yeah. out of them. 
And I think that's going to be the vibe. And if you can steal a couple of ex NFL guys, cool. But if you're just doing like a project to get back in the NFL, it's a project, yeah. this, this, this stopping time right now is a uh, starting time. Is, 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 is yeah. Nikki. All right. So that, that, that was actually a better idea than trying to poach high school players. But yeah, if, you go, go to that, you if you go if you go to like the FCS level and you're like, hey, there was a kid down there that, um, you know, was all conference second team this they know you you pull you, you make, get those you make players a decision and be like um yeah we drafted you you got an undrafted free agent grade yeah come be a ball here yeah you know we yeah, see it's, it'll be pro juco at that point pro exactly. juco that be what it is pro juco um, yeah man but you, you, you know what I'm saying you got another student in the day you know what I'm saying watch your film. Shout out to him, man. Shout out to UFL. Shout out to UFL, yo. He got y'all folded. How, how long did he fold? This year. You crazy. <laughs> folded in a year? Folded. Andy, they just merged. The X, they merged to say the XFL. XFL was already folded. XFL lost a lot of money. In the, yeah, deep in the red. A lot of money. Yeah, US, S, USFL was like breaking even. But you don't come to the table thinking that you're about to make a full rebound in a year. I know, but I'm not saying that. But I'm saying it's a number of how much I'm going to lose. If, I, if I'm putting up the money, if I'm coming in, I'm going to lose He said, hey, no. I <laughs> hey, no. money. Oh, man. Um, next thing, you know, real quick, I don't want to stay on it long, because we might talk about it later. But since it is the recap show. Yeah. I want to do a segment. I'm going to do this segment. I've been thinking about this segment. This segment says, this might not play. You don't tell me nothing. No, I don't tell you nothing. <laughs> this segment is called, this might not play out well when this video will get posted. <laughs> this is a take. I have to, we have to think to the future. Cold takes. Cold this is a straight take. <laughs> that, <laughs> and we have to make, oh, I try to video post it like, man, Woo, that, that, that sounds crazy. <laughs> so, uh, let me get my box pay off. Oh, right? Yeah. One take that might not age well, that might not age well come Monday morning this is, is that Devin Haney is going to knock out Ryan Garcia. Mm -hmm. That's not, I don't think it's going to age well, mm -hmm. but I think Ryan Garcia is trash. He's not trash. Sorry. You don't like to say trash. It's garbage. <laughs> Miss weight purposely, I think. I think he had no one to nobody taking this fight seriously. I think this is a money day for him. Yeah, I think he's gonna get laid down. Laid down. That's crazy to get laid down by that man because his power was not even like that. I mean, he had a uh, his knockdown against uh, Bryce, Bryce, Regis, Bryce. I don't know how to say that. Exactly. Boy, hey. not but, by, I know. Yeah, but uh, couldn't get the both side of there. He punched it for 10 rounds. He ain't got no punch of power. Um, yeah, I, I don't have that. I actually have, uh, I know this is probably. Ain't going to age well. Let's see. I think, I think Ryan, I think Ryan catches him. I think Ryan, Ryan I think he drops him. He, don't, he ain't going to knock him out. He'll drop him. He'll drop him. I'm not talking about like no like no well, stutter. Yeah, no, nah, it's gonna be it's gonna be that connect. Might, that might, that it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a flush flush uh flush shot. Yeah. But I think Devin will still do enough work to win the fight, even though he got dropped. Man, I got Devin winning everything but two rounds. If they go out there and do a cat and mouse boxing match, Brad, y'all hang it up. I think that hang it up, hang up, hang up your pay per views, hang it up, because the only thing that that Devin can rely on after this fight, if he do, as if he don't drop Garcia, if he don't drop him, the only thing you have to rely on after this point is your belt, is your belts that you love to talk about so much, because it ain't your star power. Yeah. And like, this is speaking, like I said, um, off, let me talk about off air. I think Bob Aram been doing any service. I'm making nobody want to buy this fight. I mean, what, $59 on ESPN Plus? Yeah. Hmm. Like, that the car should have been Jared Anderson and Deshaun Davis. 
So they both get on this other card. And I'm not even gonna lie, so I went by before, I would pay the 59 for that undercard because now it's different levels of fights, right? That's why I miss Showtime and Showbox and all that. It's di- dude, on his head. That's crazy. Um, there's different levels to boxing matches. You got your boxing matches for the mass. That's your Earl and your Tanks and your, yeah, uh, yeah, Canelo, 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 and stuff like that. Then you got the boxing fight for your boxing fans. Mm-hmm. Pure if you would add Kashan yep. and Jerry to that. That's something I would have bought just to see the undercard. The card means a lot to a real boxing fan. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm not this bop- you gotta be really good for me to pay sixty nine dollars. I remember when uh, just for you. I remember when uh Sebastian Fandora was still fighting on undercards. Yeah, and he you know saying so now he a, a champion at one fifty four. I remember when you uh broke Gary Lupin's like forehead. Yeah. Like, and my man face shifted like a like um what's that what's the X Men that uh Shape shift and other things. Night crawl. Man, yeah. Man, that man face all jacked up. Ooh, snap. You see that? Fuck, bro. That's a man. That's crazy. Yeah. But um, I, I don't see, because you're absolutely right. Cats like Jared Anderson shouldn't be no headliner right, right now. Not at this point in his career. And that's not saying that he's not a talented fighter, because I believe he is. But you still trying to build a name. He shouldn't be headlining. They shouldn't be doing no fights in in his city. Like I think uh, one of his last one one out of his last three fights, he was a headliner because he took it back to Ohio where he's from. Yep, going back this time, but like, but dog, you, do you, is your plan is to be the man in your city or to be the you know or be a household name? So for right now, you may not like it, but you need to be on the undercard right now. You know what I'm saying? Like the thing they're doing with um uh one of Mayweather's kids, uh Carmel Moten, right now. He ain't even on the under boy fights after the headlines, after the people went home already. After they after they turn the after they turn the pay-per-views off. Really? Yes. Wow. The, his his first like legit uh shot at an undercard was his, uh was uh, just what, a couple weeks ago. He was officially on the undercard. But before then, he was fighting after the pay per views went off. Well, get in with but but the point is, and he's and he gonna be legit. He only like I think between seventeen and nineteen right now. He's got a big, he, you gotta build fights. You gotta build fighting. the fighter, bro. You gotta have fighters that's worth the money to spend. Jerry Anderson, Kashan, and Devin. I, okay, I spend sixty for that. I spend sixty for that. If I don't got nothing else to do. Yeah. Right now, let's do. Get these, you know what I'm saying? Get these guys a shot, hey, and, and and that's again, we ain't gonna rehash everything. Y'all, y'all know me as far as the type of ledge I go off on about some boxing, mm-hmm. but um, when you got so many houses on like on opposite sides of the street, bro, it ain't gonna work. Yeah. It ain't gonna work. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, because everybody's house think they got a star in it, and that's not the truth. Not the truth. You know what I'm saying? Because you got a belt, don't make you no star either. You know what I'm saying? So, um, getting back to the point, as far as how takes, <laughs> this take ain't going to age well. Send a link if you got it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Fire Stick Boys are outside this weekend. <laughs> we ain't paying for Jack. <laughs> yeah, that's the, um, you know, that might not age well, but it is what it is. Yeah. You know, before we get up out of here, anything else you want to talk about? Hey man, you know we got we spinning the block back in June. Abdul Wahid Tank, we running it back up this summer. Uh, coming to reclaim the throne as face of boxing. You know what we all might do a fight party. All right, you do a lot for that. That's a bit of bit of video on that card too. Yeah, that, that might be a fight bit. party. The fight party is gonna be funny though because like it's late. I'm gonna be trying to take a nap. They want to be on the live. Man, like, uh, it's right. Yeah. Hey, hey, round four just ended. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <We're just in laughs> now, these fights be happening so late. Huh? It might be, you know, something that's gonna be back with a live man, but good felt good to be back. You know what I'm saying? We ain't made a made a pod in a minute. I ain't post nothing in a minute. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We need a little break. Glad y'all missed us. <laughs> you know? I know, I know I've been getting in uh in uh my DM too, so you know, I appreciate the love. Yeah. Glad uh glad to come back. Glad to be back. I had to be back, drop some episodes, man, because, like, you know, 
it ain't like, you know, now, you know, we always going to drop every Monday, wherever you get your podcast at, 5 p.m. on YouTube. Don't miss us. IDK Sports Pod, Anthony Great, Finesse in the Gram, all of that. You know what I'm saying? This is the summertime. You still look cool. Who's still out here dropping sport podcasts in the summer? All of them stopped, man. All they do is football. But when we made this, mm. I told Kenny, mm-hmm. I was like, we're going to be IDK Sports Podcast. We're talking all sports, mm-hmm. any sport. We're talking boxing, football, basketball. We get a hate. <laughs> we give it hate to everybody. Hate to everything. <laughs> hate. Hey, hey, you know hey, hey, man. We're talking <laughs> sports. We're talking economics of sports, issues and sports. Ain't hey, like, like, we really, we really be doing this, man. You know right. what I'm saying? We really be doing this. And you got to tap in. Check in with us, man. Tap in with us on um, IG. Tap in with us on the YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Yeah. Tell your friends about us. When you see us on the live, you've been on the live, tell people about us. We do have a live. Um, now you come through this next time. You know, the only way you can know is by hitting the button. Hit subs- the damn button. And subscribing and following us. Yeah. Because I'm really, I'm telling you, man, we really be out here talking this sports stuff. And my quiet is kept. If you know a lot of stuff, we be saying. You know, so I, know, I know what the title say. Come on, who run it? I know the title say, but a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all starting to catch on. I see y'all trying to get on to my women's marketing thing, too. A lot of y'all. Why they all trying to run, trying to, try to get in, get in with it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now everybody was talking about, who they got to market this. You know what I'm saying? You know when you heard it first. <laughs> you know when you heard it first, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey give my man some snaps on that. <laughs> you know, like, give, me, you know, um, give some snaps on that. Give my reference, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Say where you heard it from, because we out here. Um, But yeah, man, every, every Monday, wherever you get your podcast at, and we're also on YouTube, 5 p.m. every Monday. Don't forget to like, share, follow, leave a comment. Yeah. You can DM us, ask us questions, stuff to talk about. Um, we, would, we don't hesitate to talk about anything on this pod, man. I mean, I think we good, man. You know what I'm saying? Good episode. I'm happy to be back, man. You know, don't miss us. We will be dropping another episode Monday. Yeah. Um, we will be dropping a mock draft episode Wednesday, right before the draft. Yeah. So watch out for us on that one. We will be dropping the... Um, Quick mock draft episode. Just because I we didn't really want to tie up our recaps and our shows because I knew the mock draft. And if football still I think, you know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. The football still like that. <laughs> at the <laughs> core. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we we said, let's get this mock draft by itself. Yeah. Give y'all all the takes that we got. You know what I'm saying? The football still is the, is like the king thing that we talked about, but you know, we're gonna have that on Wednesday for y'all, a little treat for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So until next time, me, Anthony, Kenny, IDK Sports Pod, uh, y'all. every Monday, sure. YouTube, catch us on Spotify. If you like an audio podcast, or something about auditory learners, catch an audio, audio podcast on Spotify, Apple Pod. Yeah. And until next time, big dog. I'll at you.